Hello smart folks on the internet. You may have guessed it, but today is the day we finally play Vengir. Well, actually, I already played Vengir. I played a lot of Vengir just to train for this one game. And it is incredible. And you'll get to see it. This is one of the most fun and interesting games that I've ever played. And if you agree with that, of course, Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. But without further ado, let's move into it. So we start off with the standard opening for Vengir, which is just moving off our swordsman, of course, and getting uh, another warrior to uh, see what's up. And we are playing against Kiku, which is a terrible matchup for our final continence game for the time being. It was incredible. So let's see what is going to happen here. We don't even find a second village that soon, but at least, you know, we get our stars and we can get hunting for our first capital upgrade. And yeah, that is pretty unfortunate. However, you can see that there is a land possibility over here and we can possibly get to that uh, with bridges or something, but not yet. We need a Navy probably but we don't have the stars for that at all. So exploring a bit more, you can see that there is just nothing around at all. And that is terrifying. So yeah, this is really not the greatest start. Here we find our first uh, new village and we get forestry, which is of course very expensive way to upgrade your cities this early in the game. But there was no other way for us to upgrade our cities. Look at this one, it's terrible. It doesn't even have any resources. So yeah, it was not looking too great at this point, but we, we managed to continue. As you can see, my opponent's turn is getting longer and longer. We can't do anything with this village. It's just terrible. At least there is a ruin. Get some resources. We can upgrade that city. Take an explorer and we see that landmass and we see this uh, first lighthouse and we also meet our opponent who has a veteran swordsman on a village over here. That means that we are safe to get onto the water um, for now at least and we know that my opponent probably was somewhere up here. That gives me some hope. And hope is what you need when you start playing Vengir on continents. Then we upgrade another city. And with this economy of 14 stars per turn at the end of turn 10, we are not doing too well. We get a veteran swordsman that we don't need, of course, because we already have swordsmen. The luck is not really in our favor at the moment. And we see that our opponent is already getting onto the water and there's not an easy way for me to block them or pin them so terrible uh, pretty terrifying of course what did you expect it is playing Vengir against Kiku so it is getting pretty scary and here we see some land with all Kiku terrain that we could expect to uh, be claimed by them at least somewhat at the moment. They get onto that village, there's no way for us to do anything against that. They have defenders already, which means that their naval superiority is going to shine very soon. Here we get sailing, and we still have this economy of 14 stars per turn, which is terrifying with regards to just the way that this game was going. It was really all that I could do. So yeah, it was fine. We do probably get to use the starfish though. Um, and now I see here why my opponent is pretty slow with getting onto the water. This is the only good part of this match, I believe. Which is that my opponent did not have easy access to the water. And that is the one thing that allowed me to make some 
incredible place, which you will get to see in just a second. Absolutely insane. Here they go with the bridge. They choose to be aggressive on the land because they don't have the means to make a proper navy because we can start killing their units if they are getting onto the water here. So that is actually a pretty good call from their part. It doesn't usually make sense to go that way, but if you have a veteran swordsman and you can support it with a road, or in this case a bridge, it actually is pretty good choice to go this way and try to fight it from the land. Especially if you don't really know if your opponent is already on the water. You can assume that Fenger is not because they are slow. We see that first giant pop up. That is terrifying. Uh, we are not even close to one. Even with the tier 3 technology. We won't be able to get a giant soon. So nothing too great. We can walk away from it though. It's a swordsman. And we see that this here is not claimed yet. So that is very lucky that we get to go onto the water and claim this part of the world. And with that, we might be able to support our, well, 14 stars per turn economy a little bit more. Upgrade that city, take a workshop. Yeah, there they go and they siege one of my cities it is the one that doesn't have any resources though so that is it's okay could be much worse here i get mathematics we upgrade that city and the logic behind that is if i can somehow prevent them from well destroying me because they should probably be able to destroy me using keku uh, they are well, going onto the water and they have at least one giant they they are going to destroy me unless I can somehow defend myself and make use of these other villages that we are going to get because of the terrain generation that we had in our favor here we go for border growth and with that we are one step closer to getting ourselves a giant and we finally start catching up in terms of economy. Um, but also, catapults. Catapults are essential when you're playing Venger Continents. Out of all the technologies, it really has been mathematics that carried me through it. Not climbing, not aquaculture. It's been just these catapults that can get so much value. I usually don't get those because they're pretty darn expensive but if you can manage to make use of them they can be incredible and you'll get to see some very interesting plays in a second uh, especially towards the end all right there goes our city uh, we are getting siege now uh, there's not an easy solution for me to fix that that's what you get for playing Vengar or Continents. A lot of moving around. I get my first giant cooking. And with that I can kill this. Um, let's go back. With that I can kill this scout by pushing my catapult onto another tile. And with that I can kill it. But I still can't unsiege. Nope. And this... 4 HP scout just doesn't deal enough damage to do it. So yeah, that is another city. Goodbye. Um, at least we are claiming a lot of them over here. So still not over. And we do have mathematics, so we can get into a defensive position. And some of these cities actually have some resources instead of the finger ones. You really rely a lot on your opponent's terrain sometimes if you're playing Vengir. And that really sucks, but it's what you got to do. And there you get a giant, because they see all of these farmlands and we didn't. So that is scary, but we have a catapult. 
one catapult and one giant that should be able to do something against this. Basically, basically have <laughs> the same setup. That's actually pretty funny. Uh, but of course, they also have a defense bonus, so that is scary. Alright, so we start killing uh, their units, and this swordsman is pretty much going to kill this catapult, but at least we can kill it back. So it's not that bad of a tra trade. Um, and all of these starfish, they are really helping. So the fact that my opponent here was not able to get onto the water, that was the one saving grace this far. But they do have roads, so they can just build a bridge over here. And that is going to be terrifying. Especially if you look at my, my other stuff and how it's set up. Yeah, by catapult. They decide to road this giant towards my capital. They, they want an easy victory. They're not going to get it. They don't deserve it. They get another giant. And they probably get another giant over there. At this point, it really looks like it's just over. They have so many giants. They have so many things just coming up to me. They have taken two of my cities. And we are playing Vengir on continents. But it's not over yet. It's not over. We have to be so defensive. Whilst we still need to keep setting up our economy on this side of the map, because that is our saving grace at the moment, it's going to be ramping up our star production while we are trying to defend against all of this madness that's going on over here. Okay, so this is a pretty aggressive play. I get a bomber here in order to somehow try to stop them from building up a navy. Somewhat port pinning, but the expensive addition. Port pinning plus plus. And yeah, I realized by the way that these two villages, these two cities, I can't do anything with them uh, without roads. Uh, so that is going to be my first target in the near future if I can get it. Because then I can link up these cities because I'm not upgrading a level one city for 14 stars. That is too expensive. It's not worth it. Also get a catapult over here just in case they manage to do something tricky with a bridge or something. But looking at this, it's getting pretty scary. That giant's next to, next to my capital. Uh, my giant over here is not defending against this giant pretty well. So yeah, that was something. And they get another giant over there. There's another giant over here. It's madness. And just... Can we can we look at their stars? 36 stars. <laughs> per turn. That is... So much more than I'm getting. That's 10 stars per turn extra. It's insane. But yeah, we can kill this giant. With all of these catapults in the bomber. Get population. Uh, we don't need that. But at least for now our capital is safe. Get another population. And we just start training a lot of units. And the plan with that is. If we can somehow make more effective units that can work against these giants, then we might be able to, well, outvalue my opponent because uh, I did the counting and we have equal cities, even though it looks like we have more, they, they have more, uh, more higher level cities as well, but equal amounts of cities, but they are higher levels. So yeah, and also, one st thing still is that we have better port access, at least currently. Because this city here, it is okay, but we can we have this bomber over here. It was very aggressive to get it, but it's worth it. 
and they get another giant. A lot of giants. Yeah, look at this. That is just a march of giants that's coming my way. But the thing is, giants are pretty slow and they are usually not that strong if they are not supported well. And you are going to see how hard it is to strike a good balance. And I think that this was one of the main mistakes of this player, is that they were too insistent on pushing on with giants for a long time. That allowed me to train effective units, such as catapults. Get more population, getting me my second giant. Well, they have had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight giants. Four times as much. That's a lot. And here we start actually thinking about our plays a lot. And that has to do with, well... Of course these giants and I start getting this weird idea because I've played against this player before they use a lot of knights in the end game and I just know that if I somehow manage to set up a way that my swordsman and giant can zone of control make sure that there's no knights going to come in and kill my catapults I can still keep track um, of all of these giants and kill them it's just going to be pretty hard to get that going good organization finally it's about to get time yeah all of these giants are coming in they're coming in hot they even get themselves uh, one of these mind benders which I didn't really understand. That seems like a very expensive investment. That is not going to work because I can kill it. They may have not thought about that. Misplay on their part. I thought that that swordsman would be able to kill it. But it didn't. Yeah, we need to somehow make sure that my... Giants are in a position where they can fight off all of these giants together with these catapults. And all the on the meantime, they we need to make sure that my opponent can't just rush this way with riders or roads. Because we can't defend that easily. Uh, because my focus was over here trying to not lose my capital because that would mean the end of the game of course. Finally get a gate of uh, power, I believe. And with that, we can finally start doing stuff with our cities that are not doing anything at the moment. And now they're building up a navy with a lot of giants. And giant number nine. <laughs> but we can snipe all of these. This was a bit of a misplay on my part. This giant is not in a good position but at least it's you know safe it's not going to die here we see our opponent's capital we see that they trained a uh, warrior over there that's okay but you know still looking at the amount of high level cities that they have all of them are such high levels and mine are just <laughs> We got roads here, we can't do anything with it. That's a misplay on my part. Shouldn't spend stars that you don't have to spend. Yeah, they, they are trying to break through with their navy. Uh, we can't allow that. If we lose naval superiority, it's game over. It's just straight up game over. And that would mean that I lost the challenge. I can't do anything against it. I can't uh, play the game anymore. I need to delete it. I need to throw my computer into the trash can and I need to, um, well, drink, drink myself to, uh, to bed. Not suggested. <laughs> right, so a lot of things is going on. Of course, our setup is 
like this, we need to find a way to not lose our superiority. Well, on the meantime, also making sure that all of these giants are killed because they are expensive units and well, after some time, you need to realize that giants cost, well, hypothetically, they cost 10 stars, but usually with the setups that my opponent had, for instance, it takes them like 20 stars to get a giant going. Well, I can make a lot of swordsmen, for instance, and they are just five stars. So do with that what you want to do with it, but giants are expensive. So you can make a lot of stars per turn, but if you can't use them right, you're still not going to win the game. Finally link up all of these cities. It's been like half a game. Get our third giant. Finally start getting up to scratch with the, uh, with the economy. Actually siege one of their cities. A couple of giants are dead, finally. But still, it's uh, scary. And they have a knight. That is going to be incredibly hard to, well, fight because we don't have any good counters to it except for swordsmen. And it's, uh, it's going to get interesting. It's, uh, it's a very complicated game. But. I'll completely analyze it with you guys and I'll of course link it in the description and of course if you are enjoying make sure to like and subscribe it makes me happy especially that this is a 100th video that you can find on the internet that is incredible and I'm so glad that I get to just make videos about this game with you guys play it and have fun it's been a long, long journey, but we are not done at all. And I'm just going to get, get going again. Uh, of course, I need to keep going. So, intermission closed. Continue this video of analyzing how to play against knights on continents if you're using catapults to defend against giants. Complex. We'll need to make sure that we don't lose naval superiority, of course. A lot of things going on at the same time. It's a lot of multitasking here. So what I do here is block off the movement of this juggernaut. So that we can't just lose uh, all of our navy in one move. Also move this uh, bomber to a safer place. That it can't be hit from anywhere as easily. And we get this giant set up in a way that we can, well, make use of their zone of control capabilities and not lose all of our catapults in the back. But this is not looking like it's very safe. Like you might be able to guess. Get border growth, that's all good and dandy, but it can't do anything with that. All right, there goes my line. That was so many stars down the drain. That is, that hurt. That really hurt. I just didn't think about them knighting using a bridge. That was incredible. Also, <laughs> this bridge over here, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I still love how silly it is. The, to see that there's a road that goes through water. Uh, Midi one, may, maybe you want to fix this. <laughs> Looks so silly. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, we start fighting against their knights. And uh, that is very hard to do if you're in such a situation, but we're going to try nonetheless. At least we still have the navy to back it up. It's not like we're completely outplayed. You could say that this game really was not a piece of cake at all, but we still 
we still hang in there and we are getting shredded from all sides there's a lot of aggressive behavior from this opponent that I was not looking like it's going to be solvable in the near future a lot of knights how are we going to defend against all of this piece of cake just start by absolutely destroying everything that was set up over here and then start blasting them with a bomber a lot of bombers try to kill the giants make sure to not do anything stupid and actually this is looking pretty clean again getting some more upgrades getting my fourth giant and what is funny is that all of my giants have survived this far and a lot of theirs have just died probably around two are still alive out of the ten that they had that's insane yeah then there they go again with the knight and finally my first giant is dead and they also make a catapult there i don't know why but i think that this is the part where they start ma making some mistakes and that's the part where i can of course strike using my best tribe ever the nice part is we have the city under control sort of we can basically kill anything that they try to train over here uh, it's not perfect of course and they can still use it to go to our cities and try to chain through everything but here i started realizing that i could just train swordsmen <laughs> and swordsmen are pretty good counters against uh knights and another thing that i had to do is make sure that they can just use a bridge to well get rid of my navy as well as this entire setup over here so by doing it like this they can't place a bridge in my territory of course so that means that we are safe for now get a lot of swordsmen and that is the exact turn where they start building a bridge over there and we had luckily thought about that but we still haven't solved this issue over here and they can still go through that and they actually start breaking a bit of my setup over there so it's not looking great still but we still have the superiority on the water and that's going to allow us to basically do a lot of funky stuff And we also get our border growth over there which will allow us to get a giant in this city which will be fun uh, this is another problem um, they can they can kill this with a with a chain uh, and go to this catapult we don't want that so we just need to get ourselves a swordsman there they go they decide to kill the other unit they probably didn't have vision on this capital yet although no they probably did yeah they still can just keep killing all of my units and I just have no good answer to it other than this navy and I just don't have the stars to spend on expensive technologies so we need to do it like this <laughs> just not ideal it's pretty suboptimal still need to get a lot of swordsmen and they get some nice splash damage on my navy here but we managed to think about how to counter this part over here because there's not that many units anymore and if you compare that to what I have going on over here you can start seeing that the tables are turning Especially if we are playing it correctly, of course. And splashing a lot with these bombers really helps. And kill that over there. 
and now it starts to look like they are in some trouble but they still have a better economy and they have still the better way uh, to go about it with their army but they, they just need to get going on that or they're just going to lose especially now that I'm pressuring them a, lit, a little bit yeah they can siege my capital over here but that's just that's fine we can kill it and I don't know why they started training all of these mind benders. That's not going to solve their solution. Solve their solution? What? <laughs> Start sieging. And I don't think that there's a good way for them to solve that. So we finally start slapping them in the face with these swordsmen and all of these boats. And I actually start playing my uh, setup better so that they can't just chain through everything anymore. And that's just where we start really doing some good stuff. Okay, yeah, they can pop a giant over here, but it's still, it's going to die. That's just postponing the inevitable. Train a lot of defenders and some mind benders that are not doing anything. Yeah, that is, that is the point at which you're going to lose. And to be honest, I've played... I believe I played five simultaneous games against this opponent and they lost all of them to me and I feel really sorry I really am really sorry but you just shouldn't play five games against me at the same time you lost them all uh, uh, after some some analyzation I really know what your play patterns are like and that I could use that against you. You're not a bad player at all. If you are watching this, you did a good job. But you, you, there's a lot of things that could use some more uh, polishing, so to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I do make a lot of mistakes as well, but still. Once we finally got the city back, it, it was pretty much over. Uh, I think that there was not a good way for them to really come back out of this situation anymore. I have the city now. I have total control over the water, or at least basically all of it. And I can start sieging with all of these bridges over here and if we look at how many more units I have, I mean, you can just tell it, it really should be over at this point. And I believe this was the turn where <laughs> I, this is why the, the video has been taking longer to upload actually, <laughs> because I was waiting for this game to end so that I can record it. So that you guys can have one of the most spectacular games I've ever had. There was so many interesting plays that I just had to share it with you. And I decided to kick them from the game when they, uh, when they waited for too long. But I really think that this was over. So, guys, that was it. That was the most insane Vengear game I've ever had and I hope you guys have enjoyed it if you did make sure to of course hit the like and subscribe button really makes me happy really makes the YouTube algorithm happy which makes me happy happiness is good and of course we are going to continue making videos it has been a blast so far and we're just going to continue never stop all right, that was a piece of cake. I'll see you in the next one, and I'll eat ya. See ya.